ng unang Huwebes Santo ay inihandog sa atin ng Panginoon ang kanyang katawan at dugo sa pamamagitan ng mga salitang Ito ang aking katawan, ito ang aking dugo. Ayon sa Banal na Ebanghelyo, ang minamahal na alagad ay isinandig ang kanyang ulo sa dibdib ng Panginoon at pinakingga ng pintig ng puso yon. Tiyan natin sandali yung imahe na yun. My dear brothers, the ears were set on the heart of Jesus, but the eyes were looking outside. The eyes were looking outside into the world, but the ears were set on listening to the beating of the heart of Jesus, our Lord. That is our duty, to lean our heads, our ears on the heart of Jesus, but our eyes look outside. Ang ibig pong sabihin, ang ating unang pananagutan ay pakinggan ang pintig ng puso ng Diyos. Pakinggan ang kalooban ng Diyos. Pakinggan ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa atin. Pero kaya natin pinapakinggan yon ay hindi para sa akin, ating sarili. It is not for our own joy, it is not for our own peace, it is not just only for our own holiness. We listen to the heart of Jesus, we listen to the pounding of His heart, we know His will, we lean on His chest so that we can become better proclaimers upang ating narinig ay paalam, ang ating narinig ay ibunyag, ang ating narinig ay ipabatid sa lipunang naghihintay sa pintig sa puso ng Diyos. Hindi lahat ng mga kapatid natin ay maaaring sumandal sa dibdib ni Jesus. Pero tayo bilang mga pare, pwede nating isandal yung ating tainga sa kanyang dibdib. Meron tayong ganong karapatan, karangalan na pakinggan ang kanyang pintig. At huwag nating sayangin yon. That is where it all begins. To lean your heart on the chest of Jesus as you look outside and bring the beating of that heart to a world that is waiting for the peace, for the joy, for the love of God. At pagkatapos noon ay sinabi ng Panginoon na isa sa kanila ay magkakanulo. Si Pedro ay malapit din. At si Pedro ang pinagkatiwala ang maging pinuno ng mga alagad. Subalit, natatandaan po ba ninyo, sabi ni Pedro sa binamahal na alagad, Ask him, who is it, Lord? Ang tanong ay, nakahilig yung ulo ng binamahal na alagad sa dibdib ng Panginoon. Pero bakit hindi pa si Pedro ang nagtanong at sinabing, Lord, who is it? Bakit pa kailangang idaan sa minamahal na alagad? Si Pedro ang authority. Si Pedro ang may karapatang magtanong. Subalit, anong ginawa ni Pedro? Yung karapatan, yung kapangyarihan ay pumapangalawa lamang sa pagmamahal. So John, the beloved disciple, asked the Lord, who is it? Because the only way to ask the Lord is through love. The only way to ask the Lord is not by authority, but by love, by charity. And it is the beloved disciple who has the right to ask that question because his heart is filled with the heart of the Lord. Sa ating buhay, mga minamahal kong kapatid, ganoon din naman. Meron tayong kapangyarihan. Ginagalang tayo sa bayan-bayan, ginagalang tayo sa mga barangay, ginagalang tayo ng kabataan, mga matatanda at lolo at lolang mas matanda sa atin, nagmamano sa atin. Subalit, saan dadaan ang panalangin? Ang panalangin ay dadaan hindi sa ating kapangyarihang hawak, hindi sa lakas na hawak natin, hindi sa koneksyon na hawak natin. Talking to the Lord always passes through the Beloved. 
Speaking with the Lord always passes through love, not power. Speaking with the Lord always passes through listening to His heart, not through authority, not through power, not by domination, but by love. At ganoon din naman ang nangyari sa linggo ng pagkabuhay. Ang minamahal na alagad at ang unang Santo Papa, si San Pedro, ay patakbong pumunta sa libingan. Ano ang sinabi ng Ebanghelyo? Ang minamahal na alagad ay nauna. Subalit, hinayaan niyang pumasok si Pedro upang unang makakita. Ano ang turo sa atin ito? Love outruns authority. Love outruns power. Power in Peter and love in the beloved disciple, they ran together. But who won? Love outruns authority. Love outruns power. And that is the lesson for all of us. May kapangyarihan, may lakas. Kaya ang minsan ang tawag sa atin ay mga hari na hindi pwedeng mabali ang ating iniuutos. Pero ang tunay na magdadala sa atin sa championship ay hindi yung ating pangunguna, hindi yung ating pagmamataas, hindi yung ating kapangyarihan, hindi yung ang lahat ng utos pinapakinggan at sinusunod. It is love that outruns power. Love will always outrun authority. And that is the lesson of the beloved disciple for all of us. At kasama doon sa kanyang kwento ng pagsunod ay ang paninindigan sa paano ng krus. Paninindigan kasama ng mahal na birhen. Ulitin ko, nakatindig. Hindi nakalupasay, hindi nakaupo. May paninindigan. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Hindi sila sumama doon sa agos ng galit, ng poot, ng paghihiganti, ng inggit na nananaig noong mga sandaling yon. Pwede naman kasing sa sandaling yon ay narinig ng birhen yung pagmumura sa kanyang anak at pwede siyang magpapalahaw doon o awayin niya yung lahat ng uh, sumisigaw sa kanyang anak o pigilin niya yung kamay na magpapako sa kamay at paan ng kanyang anak o pigilin niya yung mga sundalo na hum- naghubad ng kanyang anak. Hindi niya ginawa yun. She was helpless. The beloved disciple was helpless. But in that helplessness, they chose to cure the violence that was all over the place with utmost charity, with compassion, with serene love, serene peace, serene forgiveness. May itinuturo ito sa atin. Magulo yung ating panahon. Ano gagawin natin? Lalabanan natin yung DDS? Lalabanan natin yung trolls? Lalabanan natin yung bashers? Lalabanan natin ang mura sa mura? Lalabanan natin ang fake news sa fake news? Hindi. Itaas natin yung antas ng ating pakikihamok. At ang pagtaas ng antas ng ating pakikihamok sa mga problema ng alip, ating lipunan ay makikita natin sa halimbawa ng minamahal na alagad at ng mahal na birhen. Hindi ito pagkonsente. Hindi ito kaduwagan. Hindi ito uh, pababayaan na lang nating mamayani ang masama. There comes a point in our lives when darkness seems to have the upper hand. But even if we see that darkness seems to have the upper hand, let us keep in mind, always remember, that darkness will never remain the same, enjoying the upper hand. Hindi natutulog ang Diyos at lilipas ang dilim at datating ang bagong umaga pa sa atin. Let us not fight violence with violence. 
Let us not fight uh, vulgarity with vulgarity. Let us not fight rally for rally. Let us stand up even if we seem helpless, we seem powerless, we seem weak. And then pour much love, pour much patience, pour much compassion, pour much mercy into the situation. Let us overcome fire with the water of life, with living water. And if we find that the world has forgotten to acknowledge sin, let us set the world on fire again with love, with mercy, and compassion. Final word, at the Last Supper, we are told that the disciples were there with the Lord. And the question is asked, where was the Virgin Mary? Where was the Blessed Mother? Was Mary at the first Eucharist? St. John Paul II answered that for us and he said, The Gospels are quiet, but in my heart of hearts I know that the Virgin Mary was at the first Eucharist. Because when the Lord said, This is my body, where did the Lord get his body but from the body of Mary? When the Lord said, This is my blood, where did the Lord get his blood but from the blood of Mary? And therefore, Mary cannot be but be present at the first Eucharist because the body and blood of the Lord came from the body and the blood of Mary. The fourth gospel never named the beloved disciple. Of course, some of us interpret it as Saint John, the beloved, the evangelist. But perhaps he chose it to be so, that the beloved disciple is not named, so that the beloved disciple can be you, can be me, can be all of us. We are called to lean on the chest and hear the beating of that love and look outside to proclaim it. We are called to lean on the chest, to talk to the Lord and to understand that the way to talk to Him is by being the Beloved. Love outruns power. Love outruns authority. In the end, only love will remain. And the Beloved Disciple and the Blessed Mother of God at the foot of the cross both teach us to love and to be faithful up to the very end. You, my dear brothers, are God's Beloved. It is now our turn to turn the world into God's beloved world. And only that by the power of our mystical love. What the world needs now is mysticism, the proclamation, not coming from research, not coming from our studies, but from intimacy with the Lord in loving contemplation. God bless you.